Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be showing you some PlayStation 5 gameplay on my LG C10 OLED. We'll take a look at some games including Spider-Man, Ghost of Tsushima, Red Dead Redemption 2, Days Gone, God of War and even Gran Turismo Sport. So I actually did a post last week for your recommendations, so what games you would like me to actually show and there were over 40 different games mentioned. But I'm going to show at least 10 today and that'll be a good variation of PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games. And I'm also going to tell you how much storage these games take up and what frame rate they actually run at. I've also included a link to every game in the description as well. Oh, and actually, before I show you the games today, if you've got a PlayStation 5, don't forget you get all of these games for free as part of the PlayStation Plus collection. Now, some of these I will actually be showing today, but I know when I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, uh, so many of you weren't aware of it, weren't aware you got these games for free. So I just want to give you a little reminder. So the TV I'll be using today is the same one that I've had for the last six months or so, and that's the 2020 LG C10 OLED, and this is the 77-inch version, but they're all the same, so it doesn't matter what size screen you go for, it's exactly the same specs for the C10, but it's an awesome TV, I've absolutely loved using it, and it's next-gen ready as well, and that means it's got HDMI 2.1, it's 120Hz, it's 4K, and it does support VRR as well. Now, I know the 2020 models are just around the corner, literally like a few days or a few weeks away now, but the question at this stage is, is it worth waiting, or is the C10 still a good buy? Well, let's see what the footage today shows. So first up, one of my most favourite games on the PlayStation, and that is Spider-Man. Now, this was originally released in 2018, and that was on the PlayStation 4, but it was then remastered and re-released again on the PlayStation 5 at launch in November. So there are three different modes to choose from when playing this game. You've got Fidelity, and that means it runs at 4K. It has ray tracing enabled, but it only runs at 30 frames per second. Then there's Performance Mode, and that runs at 60 frames per second, but the resolution is compromised slightly. And then there's the new mode. Now this wasn't available at launch, but that is Performance RT, and RT stands for Ray Tracing. So this, in my opinion, is the best mode to play it on. And that's what I'm using here, so that's Performance RT. So if you didn't know already, it's a third person game, and you obviously play as Spider-Man, and you swing around New York City fighting crime. So you can upgrade your gadgets, suits, complete side missions, and obviously progress through the main story. Also, if you're into collecting trophies, it's a relatively easy Platinum to get, and it's a lot of fun. So this game is about £45 or $50, and I think it's a great buy, especially for showing off what the PlayStation 5 and what this TV capabilities are. Now, it runs really, really smoothly, and it takes up just under 55 gigabytes of storage, so it's not bad at all. Okay, so next up is Ghost of Tsushima. Now, this game is a 2020 game. It launched on the PlayStation 4, but I actually only recently picked it up in the sale for the PlayStation 5. Now, it's obviously still a PlayStation 4 game. It's not a PlayStation 5 game, but it runs at 60 frames per second, and it's so smooth, and it looks incredible. It actually feels like it is a PlayStation 5 game. Size-wise, this game comes in at around 52 gigabytes, and as it's technically a PlayStation 4 game, you can actually store it on an external hard drive. So what I've done is I have a SanDisk Extreme SSD, so one terabyte, and I have that plugged into the back of the PlayStation 5. And what that means is any PlayStation 4 games that I have installed on the console, well, they're actually stored on the hard drive instead. But yeah, this Sucker Punch production game is absolutely stunning. It's an open world game where you are protecting the Shishima Island during an invasion. Now that's the main story, but then you've got collectibles and you've got side quests and you've got loads more as well. And if you drop a PS5 game in in the comments, I will give you a thumbs up as I know you're still here and I really appreciate the support. And why don't you hit that like button as well as it really does help me out. Where would they take her? Fort Nakayama. Okay, so next up is back to another Spider-Man game, and this time it's Miles Morales' version. So again, this has three gaming modes to choose from. You've got Fidelity, Performance, and Performance RT. Again, just like with the original, I always go for the Performance RT option, and that means it runs at 60 frames per second, and it only takes a slight hit on the resolution as well, which still looks awesome. So this was only released in November 2020, and if you go for the Ultimate Edition, well, that actually comes with both this Spider-Man and the remastered version as well that I showed before. So this game only takes up about 39 gigabytes of storage on your internal memory. And just like with the first one, it's an easy platinum and it's a relatively short story as well. Now the mechanics are near on identical to the first one. So you again play as a third person character. You play as Spider-Man or Miles Morales and you free roam around New York City fighting crime. Now as you go, again, you can upgrade your gadgets, you can change your suit and you can pick up side quests as you go. I think this Spider-Man looks absolutely stunning. It runs really smoothly. And in my opinion, it looks and runs better than the original. 
So this next one is a PlayStation 4 game, and that is Days Gone. Now, originally this was released in 2019, and it was locked at 30 frames per second, but recently we've actually seen a performance upgrade, which now allows it to run at 4K60, which is really, really nice. Now, in my opinion, this feels like a totally new game. Now, I've only managed to get some footage during the night shots, as you can see here, but at least it really shows off just how well the game and the TV handles those dark scenes. But during the daytime, the daytime shots looks absolutely stunning. Now, I love post-apocalyptic games, and this one is set two years after a global pandemic. You play as a guy called Deacon, and you ride around the open world in third person on your bike. Now, there are loads of side missions, and there are freakers and hostile groups to take on, and this game only takes up about 36 gigabytes of storage, which for the size of this game isn't bad at all. So this next one, if you like your classic PlayStation games, this one's definitely for you. So Ratchet & Clank was originally released in 2016 on the PlayStation 4. Now even though it looked great on the PS4, it's definitely had an update in the last couple of weeks to the 60 frames per second PS5 version, and I thought I'd give it another go. And you know what? I was not disappointed. It looks absolutely brilliant. So last month, this game was actually free as part of the Play at Home campaign that Sony had going on. But if you missed it, well, you can still pick it up for about £16 or $22. Now, it only takes up about 25 gigabytes of storage. And again, as it is a PlayStation 4 game, it can be stored on an external SSD if you use one. So this next game is a game that I'm yet to finish, and that is Red Dead Redemption 2. Now this was released back in 2018 on the PlayStation 4, and I think I'm up to about Act 3 on it now already, so I'm obviously near the end, but I'm yet to finish it. And you play as Arthur Morgan, and it's another open world game, and you've got a load of missions and complete heists and hunting, and you basically spend 90% of your time on the horseback. So it is a PlayStation 4 game, it's not been optimised or remastered for the PlayStation 5 yet, and that means unfortunately it runs at 30 frames per second and not 60. Now this was one of the most requested games from you guys a couple of weeks ago, but the thing is as soon as I started this game up I was massively disappointed. Now I'm sure this looked better on the PlayStation 4, or maybe I've just got used to playing games lately that are 60 frames per second, but as soon as I played this game it just looks blurry, it doesn't run anywhere near as smoothly as I first remembered. I nearly didn't even include it in today's video, but I thought I'd show it anyway. So it takes up around 110 gigabytes of storage, and again, that's on the external drive, as it's a PS4 game, and it can be picked up for about £20 or $25 or so. Now, one big advantage is the game saves or the game loading is definitely a lot quicker than it was on the PlayStation 4. So I briefly showed this game during my PlayStation 5 three months later review, and that is WRC 9. Now this game runs so well on the PlayStation 5, so if you like racing games or like rally games, this is definitely a game worth picking up. It's not easy, but it looks and sounds great. So there are actually three different gaming modes on this. You've got Balance Mode, which runs at 4K60, you've got Visual Mode, which is 4K30, and then you've got the new Performance Mode that runs at 1080p, but 120 frames. Now the 120 frames is really, really smooth. Now I like this mode a lot, but it obviously takes a hit on quality, but it's still silky smooth. Now this was only released in September 2020, and the version I've got here, this is the PlayStation 5 version, so it's on the internal storage, and it takes up about 24 gigabytes. So I was going to show you The Last of Us 2, but I've actually shown that in a previous video a few months ago. So I thought instead I'm going to show you The Last of Us Remastered, so the original game that was remastered a few years ago. So it was originally released in 2014, and that was on the PlayStation 3. Then it was remastered again a few years later for the PlayStation 4, and that's the version that I'm showing you now. Now this is part of the PS Plus collection, so again, if you get a PlayStation 5, this game is free for you. So this game runs at 60 frames per second, and it actually looks really, really nice. Now, I mean, obviously the second game looks better overall, but this game, considering how old it is, is really good, and it looks both great on the PlayStation 5 and on the LG C10. It just looks awesome. So you play as Joel in a post-apocalyptic world where you are trying to survive against the infected and the military, all while trying to save Ellie and get her out of the quarantine zone. Now, I really enjoyed this game. It's definitely one that I would recommend playing. Plus, it is a PS4 game, and that means it's stored on the external storage, if you need it, and it comes in at about 38 gigabytes of size. Teamwork. Yeah. So, the last time I played this game, which is God of War, was back on the PlayStation 4 when it came out in 2018. 
and it's now part of the PS Plus collection. So I thought I'm going to download it again. I'm going to test out the new performance mode that runs at 60 frames per second just to see how smooth this really is. So you play as Kratos and you've got your son Atreus by your side throughout the story. Now there are plenty of battles and fights with monsters, but what really grabs me with this game are two things. One are the visuals, because this game looks absolutely stunning. So it runs at 60 frames per second if you're in performance mode, and it's silky, silky smooth. But the other one is the story. So the story between these two characters is incredible. It's definitely one of my all-time favourite PlayStation exclusive games. Cost-wise, well, again, it's on the free PlayStation Plus collection, or you can get it for about $25 or so, and it will take about 45 gigabytes of your storage. I have a question. If Ymir was the first giant, where did he come from? In the beginning, there was Ganungadon, the great boy. So another game that was mentioned in the comments was Need for Speed Heat. So this is a 2019 game released on the PlayStation 4. Now it's not yet had a PlayStation 5 upgrade or remaster as such, so it doesn't really run any differently. It looks vibrant, it runs pretty smoothly, but unfortunately it is locked at 30 frames per second, so it's not as smooth as it could be. Now this game can be picked up on EA Play if you're a subscriber, so you obviously get it for free on that, or you can get it for about $25 on the store. And it will take about 35 gigabytes of your storage space, or your external SSD if you're using one, but if you've never played any of the Need for Speed games, this is a great and fun arcade game to play. Now this next game, I've actually shown this quite a lot on my previous videos, so almost every new TV that I buy, I always show Mafia, the Mafia Definitive Edition, because it just looks fun. It's a, it's a really good fun game to play. It's a game that I platinumed within a couple of weeks of getting it. Now this is part of the collection, so this was a remake of the original 2002 game, but it was remade and it was re-released again in 2020 on the PS4, and this game was essentially built from the ground up. Now, unfortunately, this game does run at 30 frames per second, and I doubt we will see a 60 frames per second patch or remaster anytime soon, but it still looks good. I mean, visually, it looks awesome, but you can tell it is only 30 frames. It's, it's not as smooth as I would like. Now, I really enjoyed this game, and as I said, it was a game I platinumed quite early on once I picked it up, and it takes around 50 gigabytes of storage, and again, it is a PlayStation 4 game. Okay, so this next game, so many of you wanted to see it. You wanted to see what Cyberpunk would look like on the PlayStation 5 and what it looks like on this TV. And the short answer is, it looks great. It ran pretty smoothly, but obviously when it was released last year, it was welcomed with a ton of bugs and glitches and issues and refunds. So I know a lot of people did not have a very good experience, but I actually did. So I had very few bugs. The issues that I actually faced were more kind of like very small glitches, you know, things popping in and out of frame, as opposed to the game actually crashing, which would have been a lot more frustrating. But yeah, it looks good. It runs at 60 frames per second at 4K. And as you can see here, it looks great. So not much else really to say. My advice would be to probably hold off though and wait until there is a PlayStation 5 version in the future if we'll ever see one, but hopefully we do. But if you do go for the PlayStation 4 version, it takes up about 100 gigabytes of storage. And again, you can put that on your external drive. So if you've ever played any of the Gran Turismo games, like back on the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2, this is definitely worth playing. So Gran Turismo Sport was released back in 2017 on the PlayStation 4, and this is actually the 13th game in the GT series. Now unfortunately, it actually only runs at 30 frames per second, which I actually find hard to believe. It doesn't feel like it's only 30, it feels like it could be a 60 game, and it uses checkerboard to run at an 1800p resolution, so not ideal. But saying that, as I say, it looks impressive, it runs really smoothly, and it definitely does not feel like it's only 30 frames per second. But it's a great racing game, it has 82 tracks to choose from, 324 cars, and it has a sport and an arcade mode. So I've really enjoyed playing this. Now it can be bought for about $20 or £15 from the store, and it takes up 97 gigabytes of storage. And again, this is a PlayStation 4 game. Okay, so the last game in the series I wanted to show you was a newly released game that only came out last week, and that is the Oddworld Soulstorm game. Now, that is currently available to download at no cost if you've got PS Plus, so I would definitely recommend getting hold of it anyway. Now, the last time I actually played an Oddworld game was back on the PlayStation 1. Now, considering what, that was like 20, about 25 years ago, maybe? 
Now, it kind of feels the same. Now, obviously, it looks better. That goes without saying. But it still has that kind of old, nostalgic feel to it. It feels like I am playing an Odd World game. So I've really enjoyed playing this over the last couple of nights. Well, that was a quick look at some PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games and kind of how they look on the PS5 and obviously how they look on the 2020 LG C10 OLED. And what do you think? Are there any games here that you've probably not played and you think you might go and pick up? And if you're here for the TV, why don't you let me know, have you got an LG C10 or are you looking to buy one? Or do you think you might just hold off for the C1 or the G1 that we're obviously hoping to see over the next few weeks? Well, you've just made it to the end of this video, so thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn those notifications on so you don't miss my next video. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.